Good morning. So it's time for the second recorded practice session. I'm on my way to the rehearsal room right now. The plan for today is really simple. I mentioned in the last episode that actually my goal right now is to get to 16 bars of non-stop tight double bass at 195 BPM. So if I can reach that goal, then I'm a happy camper. So that's the goal for today. It's going to be a short warm-up again and then starting at 160 BPM, working my way up the BPM ladder. 5 BPM increments, 160, 165, 170 and so on. Always playing for two minutes, uh, followed by a 30 second break. Alrighty. People are pretty stressed in Vienna in the morning. Okay, so this is the plan for today. And actually, I have to tell you, you know, today I'm feeling great. But I can tell you from past experiences, that I've, had, I've had many of those. And I'm sure many drummers out there listening or watching this can relate to that one. Whenever I thought that this is going to be an outstanding practice session, those were some of my worst practice sessions. And on the other hand, sometimes when I didn't feel so great before I started practicing, actually those practice sessions turn out to be really good. And this can be frustrating. If you're feeling good and then you're having a bad practice session, especially if you had a good last practice session like I did two days ago. If this one is a bad practice session, then it's easy to get frustrated. So one thing, one like tool that I've developed for myself is what I like to call plan B workouts. So by that I mean when I'm warming up and I'm getting ready for like the first uh, real part of the practice session which is going to be at 160 BPM. If I feel during the warm up at during the first part starting out at 160 that this is not a good day for me then I immediately switch my plan to my plan B workout. And the plan B workout is actually always just a maintenance workout. I don't want to push, I just want to work on other topics like control, having fun, playing double bass and just spending some time with the pedals. So today, like my plan A workout would be starting after the warm up, starting at 160, working up to 195. And as mentioned in the last video, I want to play for 16 bars straight, relaxed and tight. That's it. If I achieve that goal, that would be awesome. If I don't feel like today is a good day after a couple of minutes of playing double bass, then I will immediately switch to the plan B workout. And the plan B workout is going to be also, it's going to be short, so 20 minutes long. And basically I'm just gonna stick to 160 and 170 BPM and work on different patterns, control exercises, starting and stopping in time. Really important, it's always a good thing to practice. And yeah, that's it. And then I'm gonna call it a day after 20 minutes and I'm still gonna have at least a little bit of fun and I'm not getting frustrated. So this is the plan for this practice session and then I will see you in a minute in the rehearsal room. Okay, let's start with today's warm up. You know, in the last session, when I was warming up at 110 BPM, I tried to like overextend my feet like this and just use my calves. But the problem was with my left foot, since I don't really have as much mobility and strength yet with my left lower leg and my left ankle. Actually, my upper leg was helping out a lot. So I rewatched that video and I was not happy about that. So for this warm-up, actually, I'm just going to switch to warming up on the floor like this because this just makes it way easier to only using my calves and making sure that my upper leg is relaxed. So with my left foot, my hip flexor is not going to help out. So I'm going to do this for about two minutes and actually then I should be good to go. By the way, today I'm using a tempo of 150 beats per minute as warm-up and I'm just going to play eighth note triplets at 150. So done with this warm up at 150, actually just as expected, I 
I'm happy and I'm lucky today. I'm feeling really good. So actually all went really smooth. So let's start at 160 BPM. Uh, remember the goal for today is I'm going to play double bass for, I'm aiming for 16 bars straight with ease, relaxed, tight double bass. I'm just going to switch back to some regular blast beats and other metal stuff and then continue to play double bass again. Always going to play for two minutes straight and followed by a 30 second break, then increase the tempo to 165, two minutes, 30 second break and so on. So let's do this. Yeah, 160 felt okay. So this is definitely not a plan B <laughs> workout kind of day. So I'm going to continue with 165. Left foot wasn't on point always, but still was able to make it through those 16 bars uh, with ease and without struggle. Right foot feels amazing actually today. So it's awesome. One sixty-five felt good as well. The main thing I'm focusing at the slower tempos of the ankle technique, one fifty, one sixty, even one forty, is, and I think this is also one of the big concepts that you have to grasp before you can actually get this down. Is with a regular foot technique, like let's say the flat foot, basically when you with the flat foot, when you, your heel and your full foot drops onto the floor or onto the pedal, that's when the beater hits the bass drum head. With the ankle technique, it's actually the exact opposite. So every time I'm raising my heel, when my upper leg is relaxed and the weight of my foot is on the pedal, when I quickly raise my heel, that's basically when the beater travels towards the bass drum head and hits the bass drum head. And then on my way down, the heel is coming down again. That's where the beater is returning. So it's the exact opposite of the flat foot technique, for example, where you like drop your full leg. Let's continue, 170. So to finish what I started earlier, uh, with the ankle technique, it's not just the complete opposite of a technique like the um, flat foot technique. Also, you have to get used to relaxing your upper leg. If the weight of your foot is not on the pedal, then you're going to end up with a pushing down motion like this and not with a raising your heels motion like this. And this kind of motion, actually, you could do it forever. But with this kind of motion, you're going to feel the burn in your shin muscle really quickly. And it's just going to take you way longer to get up to speed and play for longer periods of time. And the pedal is not going to do most of the work for you. Okay, so 10 minutes in, we are at 180. And actually 180 is kind of the, the comfort zone tempo for this pedal. So it starts to work really well at 180. I feel like I could play forever at 180, especially with my right foot, left foot. Again, not at the moment, but the pedal is doing most of the work right here, which is awesome. And really at this tempo, this pedal is perfectly dialed in. and It feels amazing. Okay, 180. As expected, 180 felt really good. Now on to 185. And actually, all I'm thinking about while I'm increasing the tempo is, okay, I'm focusing on relaxing. I'm focusing on starting and stopping in time, bringing my heels in the ready position when I'm starting. And the only thing I add on top of that is when I increase the tempo, I just slide my foot a little bit more to the front. 
and we're not talking about a lot I'm talking about like maybe not not even a centimeter so like third of an inch so not a lot and just like this small little change in the foot position already makes it easier to play faster to increase the tempo and still be in sync with the pedal so that the pedal does most of the work for me 185 So 185 felt good as well. Actually, that was pretty relaxed. So now let's continue to 190 and 195. Now I'm going to talk less because now it's time to focus more. And my main goal, as I mentioned before, for today is to play 16 bars straight as relaxed as possible. So I don't want to work hard. I want to focus on my left foot. I want to get this down as perfectly as possible. So right now we are at 190, not 195 yet. But same goal, 190, also crucial to get those 16 bars down, 16 bars of relaxed double bass. Now let's do this. Okay, so I'm super happy with that take. <laughs> so now, Again, on to 195, goal is really simple. 16 bars of relaxed double bass. If I manage to play relaxed today at 195, then I'm gonna increase the tempo for the next workout session. One final thing you can see it already actually, my feet already again moved a bit more to the front of the footboard, makes it easier to stay in sync with the pedal while increasing the tempo. Granted, you need to relax your upper leg, weight of my foot, and now my leg has to be on the pedal at all times and you need a specific spring tension that helps you keep the beta away from the head. So if my beta would already be pushed against the head, against the drum head in this position, then my spring tension would be too low. For this one, it works out perfectly fine. So 195, let's do this. Yes, this was 195, got it down, got those 16 bars. Actually, I think at one point I played 20 bars straight, which is awesome. I still, I don't feel tired yet. And actually the good thing is my left foot and my left ankle is not hurting. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm just yeah, 20 minutes into this workout. I didn't, I'm not counting the warm up, but it's like from 160 to 195, 20 minutes. I'm gonna give myself another two minutes at 200 beats per minute. And again, still the same goal, staying as relaxed as possible, moving my feet more to the front. Actually, I don't care about the big beta swing right now. I care more about being relaxed and also that my left foot and my left ankle is not hurting. So let's do this final take for today, 200 beats per minute. So now I'm happy. 200 beats per minute at the end, more than I expected for today. Uh, actually, that was a great practice session. So I'm not gonna push it any further because I want to play again, practice again, either tomorrow or two days from now. So that's it for today. I'm gonna wrap things up, take my stuff and time to get home. Alrighty, back in my car on my way home. And while I was recording this video today, while I was practicing, actually, I got a ticket. Got a fine. I have to pay 36 euros, 40 dollars. Vienna, why? I'm in a good mood because this practice session today was good. And actually, I'm 100% confident that I will get back to 300 BPM. But also, I think it's going to be possible with the Tama Iron Cobalt Junior pedals. 
those 20 year old pedals. Yes, they are not perfect. Yes, it's going to be easier with the pearl eliminators and the axis pedals. Uh, but still, I'm convinced that it's possible and I'm looking forward to working my way up the BPM ladder. Also, one thing that I thought about today is, you know, with the drum demonstrations and the practice routine that I'm posting, actually, you know, nowadays on YouTube, most of the stuff that you see online, of course, the audio is fixed. It's not always fake, but it's fixed and small mistakes are corrected. And if it's not fixed, then at least it's like take number 112. Okay, now that's too much, but many drummers record like 40, 50 takes um, for, to get this like one perfect 45 second clip. And actually both is perfectly fine by me. I don't have that opportunity or the possibility to fix anything using the Yamaha EAD10, one microphone, not possible to edit, don't have the time to edit, don't have the time for 10 or 50 different takes or 100 different takes, just impossible. So I'm going to stick to the plan. I'm going to focus as much as possible on playing as tight as possible. But one thing that I also experienced today, and I found this out when I listened back to the stuff that I played, is actually in those situations where it's, it felt the best especially at 195 and 200 BPM, that's when I'm the least focused on playing tight. So for those of you that are also working on the anchor technique, remember I mentioned this during the video, during one of the demonstrations, I think it was at around the 170 BPM, focus on lifting your heels when performing the anchor technique. Don't focus on pushing down with your toes. If you focus on pushing down with your toes, then chances are high that right after you push down like this, you will activate your shin muscle to lift your leg again. In comparison to just placing your feet on the floor and lifting your heels by a quick contraction of your calf muscle and then letting your heels drop down, back down to the floor again. That's what I did as warm-up exercise. And that just helps you to store the right motion to your muscle memory and the right, right motion right motion for the ankle technique right here is to relax the muscle groups in your upper leg the weight of your leg is resting on the pedals and each stroke is just generated by quick contraction relaxation of your calf muscle and my friends that's it for today i hope you had an awesome day so far thanks for watching these videos talk to you soon bye bye